going on, guys? Welcome back to the Fitness For You podcast. I have in the studio today, Mr. Justin Needleman. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Ricky. How about you? Doing wonderful. I'm very happy that we finally got to have this meeting together. It's, we've been trying to do this for like a couple of weeks now. Yeah, it's been like the scheduling is just hasn't been like fitting together. It's like that weird jigsaw piece that like you're trying to like match it in. It's not fitting. So finally, we got the pieces aligned and here we are, baby. Here we are. That's it. Why don't you tell my audience a little bit about Justin Needleman? Tell me about yourself. Tell me what you're doing. Give me the riz. Tell me. Okay. Um, well, to start off, you know, I met Ricky in the later years of high school. Um, this video is really to express like how Ricky has changed my life personally. Um, you know, we met in junior year through a mutual friend named Craig. Um, I went to Bozies with him. We did the automotive program. And Craig actually introduced me to two people. One of them was Ricky, of course. And the second one was a, a lifelong friend that I just kind of separated ways with. You know, we just kind of went our own ways. And he's been my best friend for like 23 out of the 27 years of my life. It's, it's incredible. And, you know, Ricky met me when I was about 300 and I think like 20 or 30 pounds. I was definitely a big boy. And I was just at the point in my life where like, wow, you know, something's got to change. My parents would send me to like the quote unquote like fat camp and stuff and like that wouldn't work because you're like with the plunger with the twinkie on your head you're like all right you're like, I'm on the treadmill trying to get that and once you get it you're like what's going on here so Ricky gave me some really simple yet effective advice you know very simple like nutritional changes exercise changes and what I did was just follow it thanks very much you know I didn't do a lot of my own thinking I just followed orders in the best way possible and I lost 30 percent of my body weight in one summer I lost 70 pounds wow wow that's from junior year to senior year and I walked in the first day of school and like everyone's like who the hell is this kid dude that's incredible man and it was so funny because at the time I was just so caught up in the training world like I had just gotten started this was years ago you know, this is right when we kind of like were in high school, we were about to graduate, things like that. Remember the day when we went to the gym together? I think we were doing like shoulder shrugs or something like that. And we were just starting to work out together. I was just giving you what I knew, things like that. And the next summer you came in and you were just a completely different human being. And, I, and it didn't even occur to me that I did anything. I was like, wow, <laughs> you worked hard. What's he doing different? I have to ask him. Dude, you know? I literally, I just ate chicken and rice and, like, those steaming bag vegetables for the entire summer. Like, breakfast would be, like, a couple eggs, maybe, like, egg whites if I wanted to, like, change it up a little bit. And then for, like, lunch and dinner, sometimes I wouldn't even have lunch. But dinner, my mom would get those, like, those big Costco packages of chicken breast. Yeah. Just line up the entire grill with, like, chicken with Italian seasoning on it, some rice. And then the, the weight was falling off like this. And then my favorite machine for cardio. Like, I was weightlifting, of course, and then just doing, like, mostly cardio. I would wear, like, five or six long sleeve shirts, and then I would just do, like, like five or six miles on the elliptical. It would take me, like, an hour and a half. But, like, as soon as I would start sweating through, like, the top layer, I'm like, I know I'm done. Like, the oven goes ding. Like, your food's done. Like, everything's yeah, done. done. Like, and then I just go to weightlifting, and then just, it was just spreading off of me, dude. Yeah, um, dude, I just remember, like, I, I would say the heart of my advice that I was giving you, and I didn't even realize I was giving you this advice, was just to eat a little less and to death more. Um, at the heart of it. So let me ask you a question. As somebody who has been overweight, what was the main motivation for you personally to be like, I need to make a change? So it's kind of weird. Um, you kind of look at yourself or you look at other people and you're like saying like, wow, how does this person go through life like this? Or how do I go through life like this? And the weird part is, is that being heavy was really all I knew. I thought it was kind of normal for me, or I thought I was like this first person that like, man, I could just never lose the weight because you're a product of your upbringing. You know, if you, you always go to, let's say, like one restaurant that only serves fatty food and you, you eat until your heart's content, you're just going to be a product of that. And I 
in junior year, I used to hang out with a lot of different people in a lot of different social groups. And I was one of the very few big boys of the group. So I was like the comedic relief. Like I never really had a girlfriend, never really like had like, like really close friends that seemed to like genuinely care until I met Ricky, of course. But it was just, it was just like at a point where I thought it was normal. And then I look into the mirror and like one day, just something just clicked. They can just go without anything clicking. And then one day you just wake up on the wrong side of the broomstick and you're like, man, something's got to change. Like what's going on here? Right. Am I, am I just going to be like this for the rest of time? And then like the stars align. And then I met Ricky and we started to, you know, get to know each other, get close. We were like jamming in the basement. I had like my guitar at the, at the time. I was like terrible on the guitar, but I still tried to make things happen. And then Ricky and Joe were like in the basement, just slamming on the drums. Craig was on the drums too. Um, and it was just such an awesome time. And then I think I was just at one point I, I approached Ricky and I'm like, dude, you know, you're starting to be a personal trainer. Like, can you like maybe give me some advice, see what happens? And the worst that could happen is like, I don't lose any weight. But right. the best thing ever was, dude, 70 pounds in a summer. I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. Like, that's amazing. I mean, you don't see that often because a lot of people don't have that much to lose, you know, because people, most people aren't that big. I feel like I was an exception, but that's just on a data, on a data level, that's just incredible. 70 pounds in like two and a half months is insane. That's insane. That's a whole other person. Seriously. An entire 12 year old, dude. Well, I know. I mean, you just literally like just shed an entire 12 year old, but it goes to show well, first off, your work ethic. I always knew you were a hard worker from the get-go. Thank um, you. You just listen and you go, you know, and it was, you also, you were much different than all the other kids in high school. You always had a heart of gold, always, and you still do, right? You were Thank funny, you. you were very helpful. You were just, you always wore your, wore your heart on your sleeve. And I think that was where I was like, all right, well, I know this guy won't mess with, he's not going to do something to, harm me or my business or whatnot. I'm like, I could trust this guy. And I think that's where our relationship sparked and it was good. And we were able to, you know, be synergetic together. And it was, it was really good. I really appreciated that time when we were playing music and jamming in the basement. Yes. I had a band at the time. It was great. <laughs> I had multiple guitarists and whatnot. And Justin was one of them. It was good. It was a fun time. Um, let me ask you this. You lose 70 pounds in a summer. Now you have a lifestyle change. You are a completely different person, right? Mm -hmm. How did your life improve over the years now that you lost the weight and health and fitness was in your life? I'd say in quite a few ways. Um, you know, my uh, definite confidence went through the roof. You know, I was able to wear clothes that I never fit into before. Um, you know, I started carrying myself differently. You know, I, I walked with my chest out, you know, having like a strut instead of a walk. You know, I was so much more confident just in a nutshell. I mean, I it, it was just night and day. Um, it, it really carried through to my first couple of years of college. You know, I'm, yeah, some people could be embarrassed of this. But I used to be uh, at this point, I have a wife and I'm expecting a child, so I can tell you with confidence. Yeah, maybe a little one yeah. in, in November. That's but awesome. I didn't, I didn't even have my first girlfriend until I was 18. You know, right. that's how that's how much it messed with my confidence that I wasn't really able to approach girls and say, "Hey, you know, this is me. Do you want to go on a date?" Like, it didn't happen. Right. I actually in the same friend group that I used to hang out with, there were a couple girls that like didn't think of me, like didn't even look white. Senior year, they're like, "Oh, hey, let's go, like, let's go hang out sometime." And I'm like, still kind of awkward because I that was like hardwired into me. Like, I didn't know what to do at that point, so I'm like, I have no clue what to do in this situation. Like, I'm still like that that awkward dude. And then it just it gave me so much opportunities in life that I didn't didn't have or didn't see that I had, and it was just remarkable what it what it did. That's awesome. That is so cool, man. And honestly, Justin, it's so, it's reassuring for me when I hear things like that. And I hope you know how much I appreciate that because I think a lot of trainers don't understand the impact they have on people. 
and the work that they're doing. Like trainers aren't just people who just go and work people out. Like we we have a really huge role in society of really helping people change their lives. So when you tell that to me, you reaffirm to me that I am doing what I'm meant to be doing. And I hope you know I appreciate that so so unbelievably happy for you. You're married. You've got, you got a kid on the way. You yes, walk sir. This way. And now you're an entrepreneur. Tell me a little bit about that. So I do quite a few different things. But uh, what I do at the moment is I actually help people just like Ricky and in a lot of other industries of business, particularly on social media. I, um, I do a lot of appointment settings for people and qualifications. So let's say Ricky wants to expand his customer base. And a lot of people are, you know, looking for extra help, but he doesn't know who's serious and who's not. And just like any other business, let's say you're getting help for a kitchen to, to redo your kitchen. You want to try and sift through the people who actually want a contractor and people who may not really want that yet. So that's my job is to hop on the phone and really kind of, you know, qualify people who are 100% serious and they're looking to make a change and stick to it. And filter out the people who are like, oh, I want to lose the weight, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna change my diet. I'm not gonna go to the gym. I'm not gonna do any of this. So like, what? It's not like it's a waste of time, but at the same time, it's you're expending valuable resources and your time on someone that's not willing to make a change. And that's where I come in and I save people some money and I, uh, you know, help people change their lives. indirectly, of course. Indirectly. So you're a vetting system. You vet people. You're like, are you serious? Are you not serious? Things like that. Of course. You know, it, it, and it takes a lot of uh, a lot of extra stress off of Ricky's shoulders and people in that same position because he, if I'm quoting this correctly, I, I love consuming Alex Ramosi's content. There's the entrepreneur and then there's the artist. So the artist is good at painting the pictures and the entrepreneur is good at the business side of things. So the entrepreneur maybe could be painting the pictures as well, but they're really like the business person. And the artist wants really nothing to do with the business become infatuated with their craft that you can't really combine the two unless they're just born that way. So that's why you gotta, you gotta go out, gotta seek a little bit of help, and then you gotta get the, uh, the people who really play to their strength. And, you know, sometimes it takes a little while to find out what your strength is, but once you do, you just play to it and you help other people out. And that's what I'm here to do. Wow, that's awesome, dude. You know, I didn't even think people like that existed until we had our first conversation with that, you know, with, with the vetting and being able to tell who's who, who's who's appropriate, who's not it. But I like that quote you said that, like, you know, Alex Ramoy says there's the artist and there's the businessman. You know, I see that countlessly. I think a lot of trainers are artists. I think a lot of trainers, because training is an art, you know, you're helping mm -hmm. people you know, architect this plan to help them lose the weight. And then you can see your creation come to life. People are losing weight, they're gaining muscle, and it's a plan. And you're an artist, right? But then there's a the business side. And I believe all so many people just damn what like, what's marketing? How do I do that? What's what's you know, um appropriate, what's not, you know, what's um ethical, what's not, you know? And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people Alex Farmozzi also said this, there are missionaries and there are mercenaries, right? Mm. Missionaries and mercenaries and hunters and farmers, right? I think a lot of business people in the beginning are mercenaries, right? They grow for the sake of growth without working on the art itself, mm. without getting better. How do you feel about somebody who simply just grows their business to grows and maybe the wheels fall off of the business? Versus somebody who is purely focused on growing, I mean, getting better at their business and being able, they have to force themselves, they have to automatically grow because they're so good. What are your thoughts on that? So it almost comes down to like cost versus value in that sense, because if you're, let's say you're growing so quickly because you just want to grow, like you said, and the wheels fall off, when the wheels fall off, you lose sight of why you're doing this to begin with because you're just growing so much. You you lose sight of your target your your target customer saying I'm not giving them any more value because I'm just so so focused on growing my business that I'm not giving them the attention they need. And then when you're 
met, when you're really trying to master what you're doing, you know, it takes a lot longer because you're giving more resources to the people who seek them. Right. But in the end, you know, you grow up to here because you're going to grow really quick. But then this takes maybe a little bit less time. But then when you're mastering, you just, it's a slow climb, but you're going to outpace this over the years because people know your value and you know your value, which is the most important thing. Because if you don't know your value to the marketplace, then you're useless. Right. Then no one else is going to know your value. So when you continually just master your craft and get better at it, it's a short thing. It's just going to take longer, which a lot of people don't have the patience for. Gosh, how important is patience? Like being able to just get out, like work on your craft, read. Um, I'd say it's incredibly important, but I feel like people aren't born with it. I mean, people are born with talent. But people aren't born with patience, and I feel like that's something that's learned over the years. Right. And I mean, I feel like you could be like born with a little bit of it, but at the same time, I mean, it's all personality at the end of the day. But patience is definitely a skill, not necessarily a virtue. Um, just like anything else, it could be learned. Um, patience is something that is just vertically across the board, whether it's weight loss, business, relationships. It all has some sort of, you know, translation in your life. Right. Wow. That's 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 actually huge. I think a lot a lot of people need to hear that because I like what you said. You said it's a skill. It is. hundred percent. Hundred percent. Now, let me ask you another question. In regards to your business, how much patience did you need to have? Like, how long did it take for you to grow your business? How long did it take for you to just stick it out? Like, did you have any doubt? Or did you just know like this was going to be a thing? Um, well, I can refer to my detailing business because that's where I had like the most amount of success in a short amount of time. But I also had to be very patient. Um, my, I find that it did take quite a while for me to stick it out. You know, my first couple of years, there were only a couple customers. I only had like three customers out of the entire year, but the detailing season. I'm like, man, this isn't going to pay off if I have this many people. Right. It's not going to really go anywhere. It doesn't have legs. But then, you know, a couple more years, I kept on putting myself out there trying to, you know, let's say put like wall hangers in shop, right? Or bandit signs on the front, on, on like the, the, the high traffic areas in my neighborhood. Or I would go to dealerships and say, hey, you know, you have a whole parking lot full of cars. Let me come in and take care of them for you. And they tell me no. I said, okay, no problem. Put my tail between my legs somewhere else. And then I look online and your patience, patience comes down to, you know, maybe waiting it out or even it could, it can mean just doing the research and just staying with continuing to grow yourself and gain the knowledge. Because if you're not patient, you're not going to sit and learn. You're just going to say, oh yeah, whatever, and go on to the next thing. Right. Just, yeah. <laughs> so it's extremely important. Um, you can't trust everything you hear. I mean, even if you, you find someone that's incredibly credible, what they say may not work for you. Um, but until you try it, you're not going to know. So that's part of patience. You know, just trying new things, waiting and seeing what works. And my, I feel like what I struggle with is recording data. Um, you know, like, let's say it's, you want to get like really detailed about your customer base, like age, demographic, and whatnot, like recording that data. Okay, how much did I sell this job for? How long was this person my customer for? And you can you can get into all the different KPIs and the nitty gritty and stuff like that. But I mean, it all depends on your situation. You can go crazy, you can go pretty minimalist, and you can get a lot of information. But I, I think I'm kind of sidetracking here. Patience is definitely. 100% a skill you can learn, and it's very important across all different fronts of your life. Right. And Ricky was definitely one of the most patient people I've ever met. You know, Craig, the guy that uh, that introduced us, he had a little bit of patience, but he could be a, a bit of a hothead sometimes. Like, you can definitely see him kind of going off the rails a little bit, but he could always find his way back, which is something I admire very much because yes. Yes, people he was tend good. to lose their place. Mm -hmm. I remember Craig. He was very... What I loved about Craig, he was our old drummer, is he was phenomenally vocal. He would tell you exactly how he felt. And I think at the time, I think as I got older, I've learned to respect that quality, where it's like, oh, I do suck. <laughs> <laughs> the 
band name isn't really that good. You know, I just know that I suck, so I didn't have to be told. <laughs> yeah, he was into, but I remember that. That was really cool. Have you have you stayed in contact with him? Over as much years? as I would have loved to, we just kind of went our separate ways, and I think we just have like our own different paths in life. Mm. I gotta contact him, see what he's doing. You know? I hope he's doing well. You know, I, I really hope that everybody we used to you know hang out with and shoot the shit with is doing good. You know, I don't wish any anything bad upon anybody i just hope everybody go and, and do their own thing you know like really find their niche in life absolutely I totally agree so let me ask you some quick questions um as we wrap this thing up so are you would you consider yourself the entrepreneur or the artist definitely the entrepreneur because i used to be the, the artist i mean i used to be so into actual art and drawing and different things and whatnot and I just outgrew that. I uh, didn't find the time to, to really do that anymore. Um, but in, in the detailing business, I was kind of both. You know, I'm, I'm like a one man team because I'm doing the taxes, I'm doing my books, I'm doing the detailing itself, I'm doing inventory and all that. And it's just, so you could, you could definitely attest to it because you're like a one man army. Yep. So you have to be a mix of both. But at, at, at a certain point, you could either transition yourself to be just the artist or just the entrepreneur and that's something you have to know where you want to you know position yourself in the future because that gives you a lot of clarity in your business and if you want to incorporate more artists more entrepreneurs you know what path you're going down and it makes it really easy i think you give people the opportunity to be the artist you know you take a lot of you take a lot of problems off people, and I think that's an amazing thing that you do in your business. So, thank where, you. Where can people find you? How can people get in touch with you if they want to relieve themselves of being quote unquote all those entrepreneurial troubles and help them focus on the art of the business? Where can they reach you? You can find me right on Instagram. Um, Ricky's more than likely going to tag me right in the post with my uh, my handle. Just give me a follow, DM me if you want, uh, come out and say hi, get to know me, and we'll, uh, we can definitely do some work. Wonderful. Awesome. Okay. A few more rapid fire questions. Are you ready? Sure. Shoot. Pizza or tacos? Tacos. Okay. Soft Tacos. Shell. Tacos? Soft shell. Yeah, soft soft shell. shell tacos. Okay. Barbells or dumbbells? Ah, shit. Okay. Uh, definitely dumbbells. More, more freedom. More freedom. Okay. Chest day or leg day? Mm. All depends on what you define it for each, but uh, I'm, I'm a chest day kind of guy. I'm a sucker for uh, for the bench. Okay. Now, if if you had no equipment in your house or no equipment in the gym, if all the gyms just decided to blow up, what would you do? <laughs> what would I do? Yes. I would probably go insane. Probably uh, be the next guy on, on Channel 12 News with uh, this guy's going insane. He's got a, a, a ballistic armored vest, you know, taking taking prisoners. I don't know. Um, I, you probably see me running up the block. I mean, that's actually what I've been doing lately. Um, just running, doing like regular regular run of the mill stuff that that works. Right. Um, I'd probably go back to like the old military style workouts where they just use basic stuff and got a lot of stuff done. What are some tips, fitness and health tips that you can give somebody who is looking to drop weight, is looking to change their life? What is something you would tell them? So do you want to be like simple or you want to be a little a, stump, a little convoluted? Let's say you have three tips to give somebody. You know? So tip one, it's a, it's a two-parter. You know, like Ricky said before, it's super simple. Eat less. I'm not saying eat less portions, but eat less calories. And move more. Um, second one, have some patience. You know, Rome wasn't built on a day, or it, was, it also wasn't built on maybes either. So you're not going to say maybe I'll have the chocolate cake tonight. No, you're not going to have the cake tonight. You're not where you want to be. Once you once you're where you want to be, then you have a little more freedom. You know, you have you have the results, and you you know what to do to to get back to where you want to be. And then third is believe in yourself. You know, no one's going to do it for you. As much as you might have a support system from your family, your friends, and your colleagues, no one's going to truly support you like yourself. 
and just having that inner dialogue saying like I can do this. I know it sounds like really freaking corny because you like you see those movies and the, like the 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 protagonist in the movies like they're almost down for the count. And you're like I can do this, I can do this, but it's really yeah. just like that. Honestly, you just don't have to be the, the star of a movie. And actually, that's kind of like my fourth piece of advice. You know, hand to yourself as the main star of your own movie. Otherwise, you're going to be the extra in someone else. Wow. Say that again. So, tan to yourself as the main star of your own movie. Otherwise, you're going to be the extra in someone else. Ooh, that's awesome. That is an awesome quote. Justin Niedemann. Quote right there. Awesome. <laughs> I, I can't take credit for that one, but... <laughs> that's okay. I, resonate. I can't take credit for half the stuff I say anyway, too. So... Uh, <laughs> So, Justin, thank you so much for coming on the show. This was such an awesome conversation that we had. Guys, if you want to reach Justin, I got his tag down in the description. I got it all over the place. So click it, say hi to him, say hi to him twice, do some business with him because he's going to change your life. But you guys know the deal. Live lean, stay happy.